We have two mayor's appointments. The first one, Amy Leffringhouse to the Quincy Preservation Commis Commission and Mrs. Stacy O'Brien as Human Resource Director for a one-year term beginning June 23rd. I want to entertain a motion to Mr. confirm the appointment. Mr. Chairman, yes, I move to confirm the appointment. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Can we get a roll call on that? Sure. Thanks. Alderman Gale? Aye. Mann? Aye. Deusterhaus? Aye. Bauer? Aye. Holbrook? Aye. Habermel? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Rhine? Aye. Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Brink? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Holschlag? Aye. 14 ayes. Thank you very much. First resolution approving sublease agreement, Lincoln Interpretive Center, sublease portion of 128 North 5th to the historic business, excuse me, Quincy Business District for five years. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move for adoption of the ordinance. Second. Our resolution. We have second. a motion and a second to adopt this resolution. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale? Aye. Mann? Aye. Deusterhaus? Aye. Bauer? Aye. Holbrook? Aye. Havermail? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Brink? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Holschlag? Aye. 14 ayes. The resolution is adopted. Resolution authorizing lease of airport facilities, lease of spec building at the Quincy Regional Airport to ASL Properties, LLC. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman Farha. I move for adoption of the resolution. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman Deuster House. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I hear a lot that uh, government can't do anything right, and uh, I don't necessarily believe that, but it seems that from time and time again, we do our darndest to prove that right. And uh, this lease is one of those times. The uh, original lease with Baldwin developers and remember, their charge was to build a building and find a business or a manufacturing business or a commercial business to use that that needed direct access to the airport. With that charge, the original lease started out at $0.10 cents a square foot per year. At that time, the prevailing rate for private hangars was $0.23 to $0.25 cents a square foot. Included also in that lease was rent abatement for the first three years. However, if they successfully leased all or a portion of the building, the abatement disappeared. So it was a contribution, but it wasn't a great contribution. After five years, the ground lease went to 15 cents a square foot per year. After that year, it was subject to adjustment according to the CPI, which is consistent with how we adjust rents at the airport. In that time, we haven't received any rent. Obviously, they weren't successful in leasing the building as intended, and the use, it has been used, but it's been used as a limited basis, essentially as storage or as a hangar, much the same as the private hangars we have out there. Um, a historical note is that uh, the uh, rent as adjusted, which is the base rent for this proposed lease, is now at 17 cents a square foot per year. That's the same rate that we applied to private hangars in 1989. Today, it's about 30 cents a square foot. In 2001, shortly after this deal was struck, we devised a plan to give an incentive for the construction of private hangars that recognized the prevailing ground lease at 23 to 25 cents a square foot adjusted to the CPI with a five-year 100% abatement and a five-year 50% abatement. And after 10 years, the rent as adjusted applied. 
after that, there were about three, maybe four hangars constructed. After that program, several requests have come in in the interim years asking for a sweeter deal than that. So what we thought was the floor was not the floor. It was an opening to go further. Uh, a recent incident was one of those hangers sold after 10 years. The abatements were gone, and the buyer wanted an abatement, of all things. We refused it. There was no benefit to granting an abatement to that. This current lease request far outstrips all other lease plans in the amount of public subsidy granted. It maintains the subsidized base rate, which, by the way, is 40% less than the prevailing private hangar rate. It grants 10-year 100% abatement, an additional 10 years 50% abatement. And in addition to that, it grants 40 years right of first refusal on the adjacent 50 to 70,000 square foot undeveloped property next to it. This right of first refusal, in my opinion, inhibits and inhibits our flexibility in developing that particular ground, and that's more valuable ground in that in that development or that planned development because it has easy access to the taxiway that the city constructed in relation to the construction of this building. That taxiway was constructed at the same time as the apron to the building, which private hangers build their own apron. We, we built this. It was our contribution. We also built the access road. We also built the parking lot. Between the city and the state, it cost us $408,000. That was our first investment. Is direct outlay. Plus, we've lost rent over the last 14 years because we haven't received anything. And maybe that was by design. It's contrary to the lease agreement, but that has passed us. The lost rent in these 14 years, by my pencil on the back of the envelope calculation, is about uh, almost $127,000. So now we've exceeded half a million dollars in direct investment and lost, lost rent. And remember, when I say lost rent, that's important <coughs> because we subsidize the airport in excess of 300000 and some dollars every year. So rent we lose or don't receive means subsidy that we have to continue. The proposed agreement over the next 20 years compounds that lost rent. A rough calculation for the first 10 years is almost $127,000. The 10 years at 50% abatement is uh, about $75,000 on top of everything. That's assuming I used the assumption that inflation was an average 1.75% a year, which I thought was very conservative. I think this lease should be treated as the other private hangers. The buyer has confirmed that he has no definite plans. He'll install some facilities inside for his use. It will be used much the same as a private hangar out there. As far as the additional 70,000 square foot that the right of first refusal was granted on, which, by the way, was free, there was no cost for granting that. There's no plans for that. When we constructed the first lease with Baldwin developers, it was for a specific purpose. It was for a manufacturing business, and I know they tried hard to find something. Those businesses must be few and far between, because in 14 years we didn't have it. And I do believe that they could have granted use of the space to other entities, mainly as a hangar, but they were holding out to get what we originally intended. 
I think the best course for this is to send it back to the committee with instructions. Instructions that a new lease be written along the same lines as the rest of the private hangars out there using the prevailing ground lease as the starting rate and granting no more than 10 years abatement, 100% for five and 50% for five, which was granted 14 years ago when we instituted the program for private hangers, and that the right of first refusal for the adjacent land be removed from the contract. Alderman Farr. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, with all due respect to my learned colleague, who I have a great deal of respect for, I understand his concern about the form, but I'm not talking about the form here. I just want to briefly cover a couple of points he discussed. First of all, 14 years ago, and he is correct, there was a speculative venture undertaken in the airport with the city of Quincy, a cooperative part partner. It was very speculative. The world looked different. The economic reality 14 years ago was entirely different. The reality is we've collected, collected nothing in 14 years. The reality also is different. 14 years ago, there were active partners. Right now, the only active partner is Gretif, the economic development, uh, for lack of a better uh, word, quasi-representative of the community of a wide variety of industrial, the old Quincy Industrial Commission in the city. This would be an undue burden. I think they've made that clear, and I don't know if uh, their representative wants to speak tonight or not, but it would be an undue burden on them. Secondly, that ground, and this is a ground lease, we're not talking about rent of the building, Greta owns the building. That ground is worth what someone will pay. And this is exactly the terms of what someone will pay. It's not worth what we think it's worth. It's not worth what some imaginary number, it's not worth the terms of the ground lease. It's worth what somebody will pay, and this is what somebody will pay. And we're trying to repair a situation and move forward. We're not trying to treat anybody any differently. We're not trying to uh, provide an unfair economic incentive. We're just trying to move this forward and have a use. Third, there's a comprehensive plan. All the aldermen, the media should take advantage of it. The reality is there's a great deal of space out there right now available. And it sits empty. There's been a lot of hard work over the years, but this is the best possible solution to a difficult problem for this community and for Gretif to move on and get something. Something is better than nothing. And with all due respect, if we take Alderman Deister houses, we go back to the same model where we go 14, 15, whatever it is, years into the future and get nothing. And this is a reality. Folks, this is a reality. When you want jobs, when you want creation of economic development, you have to sometimes do things that in the abstract you don't like or distasteful. That's all I've got to say. Mr. Chairman. Alderman Um I don't know if this is a question for the uh, Aeronautics Committee or for the airport manager or for legal. I've got a number of questions as I was listening to Alderman Deusterhaus and looking through the release this weekend. So whoever Jared. feels competent to answer this, feel free. And Alderman Farha and Alderman Deusterhaus, if either of you have answers to any of these questions, feel free to. Or Alderman Heineke, I think. Is that everybody on there? Yes. Okay. Uh, feel free to jump in. My uh, first question is on the committee action. Was this what was the vote on the committee? Was this? Does anybody For this remember? Lease here. For the lease itself. For the lease itself. Four to one. Four to one. Okay, thank you. And I guess this is kind of a general question. I mean, would a continued non-occupied status of this building? Do we gain anything from that? Are we? I mean, does it do any good for the airport to stay, for this building to stay unoccupied? In my personal opinion, no, it does not. We're okay. going to see the building continue to, <coughs> excuse me, deteriorate. That's one of my major concerns. We're eventually accepting ownership of the building, which is another one of my major concerns. And we will, do, do we eventually, does this revert back to us at some point? Uh, according to the terms of this lease, we'd have approximately 26 years and it'd revert back to our ownership. Okay. And then on the right of first refusal, uh, and I didn't, I didn't quite catch this in the article. And the right of first refusal, typically those, uh, if somebody offers to, to use the land for something, the person that has right of first refusal matches the offer. So there would be an economic advantage to that first offer. So for them to, ha to leverage that, they would have to match that offer. So we would get an economic gain there potentially. 
the, so that's probably more of the potential economic gain in the immediate future if somebody wanted to use that land. So we're really not hurting ourselves by putting that in there. Is that? I don't feel so. Okay. I don't feel like that we're doing that at all. Okay, thank you. And uh, is there an increased value to traffic, increased traffic, increased use of the airport? Is there a value Absolutely. to you? Or, or a, not to you, but to the airport and to the city for that? Correct. There's a, there's a value in a multitude of different ways. Uh, directly to the airport would be fuel sales. That's where we'd see the value increase that would go into the, to the FBO and just continued movement there. And then obviously the economic impact it has to the community. Just more people, more movement, more everything? Traditionally, people are flying around private aircraft. That's good for a local economy. Okay. And then the last thing I got, and this is kind of a, I don't know who this goes to, uh, from Alderman Deuce-Trouse's comments, I would ask, I mean, are, are, I don't know how to sugarcoat this. Uh, has somebody dropped the ball on this of getting this building occupied? I mean, uh, Anybody feel like any, I mean, I don't I'll, know. I'll, I'll venture my opinion, and it is an opinion. I, I don't think anybody's dropped the ball. I just think that, you know, we had stars in our eyes 14 years ago, and, and like I said, the type of business that you're looking for, they're few and far between. You know, it, it's got to be specialized if you need direct access to the airport, and it, you probably have to be a bigger metropolitan area with, with much more traffic to come in. So... No, I, I wouldn't fault anybody. I, the only fault I would place is if we accept a deal like this. Alderman, it can also be lost at the, the timing. Uh, the aviation industry changed a lot after 2000, you know, 9-11. 9-11 so happened and, and it was just aviation not, collapsed. The timing wasn't the best for, for the aviation industry in this case. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I, I don't want to point fingers, but it just sounded like we were kind of dancing around an issue that maybe, you know, we need to discuss a little bit more straightforward. So... But that, that's all I had, and it appears to me that basically where we're at is that we get somebody out there, we get some movement going, we get things moving, perhaps it'll have other peripheral benefits that were not uh, directly financially, but could help the airport in general. So I, I will probably support the lease. I just wanted to get those uh, questions in. Or, Thank or, you. Or, Mr. Chair, as, as to the assumption that there's benefit, I, I guess there's benefit. You can't quantify what it is. Right. We don't get any gain from fuel sales we don't have a fuel flowage fee anymore the council eliminated that uh, do we get gain from people occupying hangars out there well, i guess there's gain from that however they also pay 30 cents a square foot when their abatement's up alderman Bar or uh, assassin i'm sorry yes i have one question jared you said that uh, 26 years then it could revert back to the city Yes, sir. Is there built-in maintenance? Do we do check on that, that we just don't let this out for 26 years and we get a... Uh, we, we do checks on it, but there's only so much you can do on a building that's not occupied. Well, I'm when talking they, about though, through the 26 years. If we take this lease and then they give it just to go out there and run it and, and do no maintenance to it, not that they would, and they just turn it back over, is there some kind of uh, built-in um, maintenance agreement that they would keep up, keep the building up, or do we have any leverage on... Are you talking for the current lease or the new lease? The new lease. lease. Yes, sir, there is. Okay, thank you. There's several categories there. Alderman Brink. Uh, Jared, real quick, have we spent, how much money have we spent on maintenance of this building in the last 14 years? Do you know? Have we, do we? From the airport itself? Yes. None that I know of, sir. So that building has cost the city anything sitting there for 14 years? The building itself, no. Then the last one, one question, Alderman Deuce Trials related to the other ground leases in the airport. Will this this agreement put other ground leases in jeopardy this is where a lot of opinions differ i don't know my personal opinion no it does not uh, i've spent a lot of time talking to other airport managers in the region looking at some surveys this building this chunk of ground the size that this lease is going to cover there's nothing comparable to our airport the whole goal is to spur development in that region of the airport for the land option i don't feel a lot of heartache there because i want somebody to take that land if it's tied up with a maybe We've got plenty of land to spare. So as you start comparing apples to apples, it's not there. It's apples and oranges on every spectrum. Uh, a lot of the airport managers confer, or concur that as you start seeing an increased land lease of this size, you're going to see a de decreased rent rate. Um, 17 cents is well within the realm of what was designed with the original lease brought up for CPI index. It seems like a very fair rate. Thank you. Any additional questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, that last statement is a, strictly a matter of opinion. Absolutely. Because 30 cents a square foot is a reasonable rate, and that's the rate that we have been applying as adjusted 
for 30 or more years. Um, to address some of the points that Alderman Farha brought up, I know there's scuttlebutt that says this is an undue burden on GRETF. However, they have not brought that to the committee. They have not brought that to me personally. I am frankly don't take much stock in third, fourth-hand conversation or, or such. I, I did communicate with Marcel a couple of times and, and ask about their revenue and expense, and he said they had a spreadsheet. I haven't seen it. I guess I was supposed to go down and view it. It couldn't be sent to me. Um, to Tony's question, all our leases require owners to maintain their hangers to our standards. So they will be maintained. Um, if we have, if, if there is an undue burden on GREDF, which I won't discount, that's a possibility, even though it hasn't been communicated to me, there's a better way to salvage this deal to see a return so that the, the public can see a return on what they've invested already and what they've lost in rent. And it might take a while, but we're going to be there for a long while. We individually may not be, but the city will be there for a long while. The airport will be there for a long while. And frankly, our track record with leasing and managing hangar space out there has been pretty good. We have, we have a account in the black that's available for expansion of other hangars. And don't forget we have a half a million dollars in a link deposit that was tied to this building that's earning minimal interest that would be available. If, if it worse comes to worse, we should buy it. It's one of our obligations as the, uh, as the manager of the airport, as the owner of the airport, is to provide in some manner hangar space for airmen. Are there any further comments, Alderman Distraus? I'm going to give you what the lease rate would be today for the 66,815 square feet that we're talking about at 30 cents a square foot would be $20,000 a year, $1,670 a month for 66,000 square foot under roof, plus an apron that you don't have to maintain, a taxiway that you don't have to maintain. Nothing was said about the access road to the parking lot, so I'm assuming that they will have to maintain that, but it's brand new and it's concrete. I don't think that's an outlandish figure, and I think if you're buying a building of that size, that's not an unreasonable expectation that at some point you would pay that, and not 20 years down the road. 10 years is pushing it. Alderman Farah. Yes, I just want to go back to a couple of things, and Jared, you can comment at the end. First of all, I want to point out to the alderman again so we don't get confused. We're talking about the ground lease, strictly the ground. The building is owned by Gretev. There is a link deposit that was used originally 14 years ago, federal, federal dollars, to guarantee the loans on the building with the various partners, okay? Uh, number two, the last thing that I would ever want to see is us own the building. Um, I don't think the support is here to own the building. Whether Alderman Deesterhouse and I agree with the idea or not, the reality is I don't think the public support is there. And to be honest with you, government owning a building and trying to operate it probably isn't the wisest thing. Now, to Alderman Habermas' question, no. I don't think anybody think did, it, did anything wrong. I think the economic conditions turn negative, and I think you've got Peoria, you've got St. Louis, you've got Chicago, you've got Springfield, you've got Bloomington. All those are active airports, and they're recruiting, Peoria is quite large, recruiting the same types of people we are. So it hasn't worked. Gretev has someone who wants to buy the building. They want to sell it. They have an active interest. They are willing to try to develop the building, and they have met with us, and this is the best repair strategy. Finally, Jared, I want to ask you a simple question. The FAA has looked at, the, at this agreement. Have they found any way, any shape, any form that we've done anything untoward, Anything inconsistent with their policies? Do they have any concerns about this lease? No, sir. Thank you. 
Okay, we have a motion. Mr. Respect. Chairman, I would make a substitute motion that this re be referred back to the committee with instructions to write a lease that is strictly consistent with the leases in other privately owned hangars at the airport. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. no. Okay, the substitute motion fails. Uh, we do have a motion and second uh, to adopt the resolution. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale? Aye. Mann? No. Deusterhaus? No. Bauer? No. Holbrook? Aye. Havermail? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Rhine? Aye. Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Brink? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Holschlag? Aye. Eleven ayes, three noes. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Second presentation of a special use permit for planned development at 1130 South 6th. First presentation of an ordinance, a variation from zoning regulations, former 701 Jefferson, decrease the year rear yard setback from east property line from 25 feet to 12.5 feet to build a two-family dwelling. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move that be read first time by title. Second. We have a motion and second to read this uh, ordinance first time by title. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The clerk will now read the ordinance first time by title only. An ordinance granting a variation from zoning regulations. Here ends the first reading by title only. Okay, finance committee report. Transfers $18,600. Expenditures $706,971.62. <coughs> Payroll six hundred and sixty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars and eighteen cents. Holschlag, Booster House, Sasson Havermail Finance Committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move that be received and the vouchers issued for the various amounts. Second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale. Aye. Mann. Aye. Dooster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermail. Aye. Farha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brain. Aye. Heineke? Aye. Holschlag? Aye. 14 ayes. So ordered. Any additional business, Madam Clerk? No, sir. Alderman Gale, any new business? No new business, Your Honor. Alderwoman Mann, any new business? No, sir. Alderman Deusterhaus? No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Bauer? No, sir. Alderman Holbrook? None, sir. Alderman Havermail? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. I do have two things. Um, we received a, a mixed bag of news last week. First, we were excited and honored uh, to have one restaurant open on a riverfront and another break ground on Broadway. And while we uh, welcome Panda Express and Chicks on the River to the Quincy community, we are sad to say goodbye to Graphic Packaging, TGI Fridays, The Mustard Seed, and Poppy's Religious Store. For those affected by the closings or who are currently out of work, the Workforce Investment Board uh, will hold an informational workshop tomorrow, Tuesday, June 3rd, at 9 a.m. at the Quincy Workforce Service Center, 107 North 3rd, the informational uh, topics will include retraining for new employment skills and unemployment insurance. We also received news that Quincy Compressor has on the table consolidating the plant in Quincy with their plants in Alabama. For the employees, the city, and the state, this was unexpected news. To the 152 men and women who are employed locally at Quincy Compressor, I know there is a lot of uncertainty. There is uncertainty on how the negotiation process will work, the timeline for any decision, and what the future holds. One thing you can be certain of is that keeping Quincy Compressor in our community is the top priority for my administration. Last week, I convened a task force consisting of officials from the City of Quincy, Great River Economic Development Foundation, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, the Workforce Investment Board, the International Machinist Union, Local 822, as well as State Senator John Sullivan and Representative Jill Tracy. We will be meeting throughout the process, not only to offer assistance to employees during negotiations, but to also explore what we can do on our end to help keep the plan open. I've spoken with John Thompson, the president of Quincy Compressor, and he has assured me that the management team is open to ideas from our task force, and I look forward to discussions with the management team when they are in Quincy next week. Um, that is all the information that I can give right now, but I can assure you that uh, the task force will have more information in regards to negotiation and the process as we have more details. 
Second thing is, um, for those of you wanting to sign up for our residential tote service, this is the last week to do so. Uh, you can call our utilities department. And uh, once again, the service will most likely start in January. Uh, you will have to put a uh, purchase your tote for $60. And the monthly fee will be $12.99 per month. But you will not be billed until the service begins. Um, so if you would like to s sign up for that, please call our utility department. Other than that, I have no additional business. Alderman Farah. No, Your Honor. Alderman Sass. Oh. Yes, I have a dumpster to be placed at uh, 534 South 22nd starting tomorrow for uh, two weeks. That's it. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ordered? Yeah. And we do have uh, Stacey O'Brien here in the crowd. If she'd like to stand up, I'd like to welcome you to our team. Thank you very much, Stacey. Look forward to working with you. We won't hold it against you that your husband's from Galesburg. <laughs> Alderman Ryan. Uh, no, no additional business. <laughs> Alderman Lepper. Uh, just to ask to speak to Chuck Bevelheimer after the meeting, please. Sure. Thank you. Alderman Mussolino. No new business. Sure. Alderman Brink. No, no, thank you. Alderman Heineke. Yes, sir. Midsummer Art Fair will be Saturday, June 28th. Um, they want 9th Street in front of the gallery from 9th to York up to 40 feet, 40 foot east of the alley uh, that comes off of 9th Street between 9th and 10th Street. Um, no residential property will be involved. It's only during the daytime till 6 o'clock. So the active public can come and visit from 11 to 5. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ordered? Any additional business? I'm in Hoshlock. No new business. Move, we adjourn. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ordered.